Hello, I'm Kathy Davidson. I'd like you to join me and the ministers of music from here, Water of Life Church in Plano, Texas, as we minister the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, which is the power of God. Smith Wigglesworth was in Switzerland, and the Lord was graciously working and healing many of the people. He was staying with Brother Rius of Goodwill. Two policemen were sent to arrest him. The charge was that he was healing people without a license. Mr. Ruiz said to them, I am sorry that he is not here right now. He's holding a meeting about two miles away. But before you arrest him, I want to show you something. And Brother Rius took these two policemen down to one of the lower parts of the district, the other side of the tracks to a house with which they were very familiar, for they had gone there often to that place to arrest a certain woman who was repeatedly put in prison because of continually being engaged in drunken fights. He took them to this woman and said to them, this is one of the many cases of blessings that have come through the ministry of the man that you're about to arrest. He said, this woman came to our meeting drunk, in a drunken condition. Her body was broken for she was ruptured in two places. And while she was drunk, Smith Wigglesworth, the evangelist, laid his hands on her and asked God to heal her and to deliver her. And when he said that, the woman spoke up and she said, she joined in and she said, yes. God save me, and I have not tasted a drop of liquor since. The policeman who had the warrant for Smith's arrest stood there for a minute, and then they said in disgust, let's see if the doctors can do something like this. And they turned around, and they walked away, and they never saw them again, Smith was never arrested. Consider what I say. Now I have a great song for this. Victory in Jesus, done here by the My Girls.
today, I'd like to invite you to join me on April 11th in Joplin, Missouri at the Holiday Inn, where I and the Water of Life Quartet will be ministering. We'll be there at Saturday, April 11th at noon to 2. And I'd also like to invite you to join me here at Water of Life Church, Plano, Texas. Plano, at the corner of 18th and Avenue P, as I minister Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Now, let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Let the power of my Lord be great. Father, Father, let the power of my Lord be great and grant your people repentance. Open our eyes that we can see. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. I'd like you to turn to Romans 1, verse 16. I'm going to begin there. This is Paul speaking. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel? It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You can find that in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not timid to trust in it. I'm not afraid to use it. Because for it is the power of God. It is the power of God. It is the ability of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. You know what that means? It means unto our salvation, whatever you need. It is the power of God to get us whatever we need. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. I have been speaking these last several weeks about the blood of Jesus about that blood that Jesus shed on the cross when he died, when he was buried, when he rose again. When he was on that cross, his blood was shed for us. And that blood, that blood, that blood does things for us that are eternal, that are powerful. And last week we talked about redemption. I want to look at justification this week justification. I want, first of all, though, I want us to go to Hebrews 9. And we're going to go over what this blood did, what Jesus did with his blood. And I'm going to start in verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands. That is, uh, which are the figures of the true. This is talking about the, the tabernacle, the temple of, that Moses, the tabernacle that Moses built here on earth and the temple that David and Solomon built for God in Jerusalem. This is talking about those were made with hands, people's hands, human hands. But there is a tabernacle that was not made by humans. It said, For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Do you see that word, for us? For us. You know, you look for a lawyer to stand for you in court, to be your representative, to, uh, for you in front of a judge, because you don't know exactly what to say. So you look for a good lawyer to stand for you in front of that judge. But you know what this verse says? We have someone that's standing for us in front of the judge of the whole earth, and that's Jesus. That man is standing in front of the Father right now for us, representing us, telling the Father what Jesus had done for us. That ought to get you excited. Then uh, verse 25, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Remember a couple weeks ago I talked about that um, Aaron had to enter into the holiest of holies. He was only allowed to do it once, only once, only once a year. And he had to have blood with him. And nobody was allowed to be around when he went in there. No one. And he went in with blood. And he had to pray that God receive that offering or Aaron was a dead man. Now we have Jesus. 
with his own blood, his own blood, not a cow, not a goat, not a dove, his own blood entered into the holy place every year. Oh, entered in the priest entered in the blood of others. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now let's go to verse 11 in that same chapter, chapter 9. But Christ, Jesus, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, entered in once to the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. I've said this before. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it must have been like in heaven? Jesus had left heaven to become just like us, a man like us. He left his heavenly father and he came to earth to be just like us. He walked like us. He showed us how to walk. He was our example. And then he laid down his life and he was crucified. They nailed his hands to a tree. He took on your sin and my sin. Every bone, every bone out of joint marred more than any man. He did it for us. He took our sin, our sickness, our poverty, our perversities on the cross and died a horrible death. And then he was buried. And for us, for you and I, he went to hell. He did this because the Father sent him. And the Father came and got him out of hell and raised him from the dead. And then what did Jesus do? He took his own blood, the same blood that he shed on that tree, and he went to heaven. Remember when he came out of that grave, he told Mary, he said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father. And after he did that, he ascended to heaven. Can you imagine the welcome, the welcome of Jesus coming, saying, look, Father, I did everything you told me to do. And now I have my blood for all these people. And he entered into the holiest of holies in heaven, in front of the Father. And he sprinkled his own blood in heaven. Can you imagine what that must have been like? You know why? Because the moment he sprinkled that blood in heaven, you and I were redeemed. You and I were justified. You and I were sanctified. You and I were set apart to God. We were forgiven. That blood was for us. Not sure? Let's go to Romans 3. I'm going to begin in verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if any of you out there think that you haven't sinned, you better go to 1 John because it says if you say you haven't sinned, that makes you a liar. You know what a liar is? It's a sinner. Okay, verse 24. Being justified freely. Freely. Look at that word freely. Being justified freely. Freely. You know what justified means? I learned this in the denominational church when I was this high. Justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. Justified means the slate is wiped clean. It's as if you have never sinned in the first place. Think about that for a second. It means that you have never, it was like you have never sinned in the first place. You know those sins that those those lusts, those cravings that you have, being justified means they're not even there. They're not even there. The lust, the want, the craving, the passions for those things, those people, those 
feelings, when you're justified, they're not even there. That's how deep justification goes. Let's go back to freely, justified freely by his grace through the redemption Amen. that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption, the ransom. Now look, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, an appeasement, a satisfier through faith in his blood. When that blood was shed, that is what Jesus used to pay for your sin. And you have been justified. That sin has been taken away. Just as if it was never there in the first place. That's how clean justification is. Do you hear the word clean? That's how clean justified is. All right. It says to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Now let's go over to Hebrews 5. And I'm going to begin in verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us. Why are we justified? Why would God go to such lengths to justify us? Because he loves us. It says it right here. But God commendeth his love. He demonstrates his love. He actually pushes his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, while you were at your very worst. I remember when God was ministering these verses to me years ago. And I read this, but God commendeth, demonstrates his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, and I, God showed me while I was at my very worst, my very worst is when he sent Jesus to die for me. Amen. He died for me at my very worst. Now I have something to say to some of you. If he died for you at your very worst and he's finally got your attention and you are finally making the effort to walk with him, why do you think he's going to dump you now? Why do you think he's not going to walk on with you now? He died for you at your very worst. He's not going to leave you now. All right. Now, for, uh, for God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Much more than being justified, justified, just as if you've never committed it in the first place. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That's what justification is. That's what the blood of Jesus did. You know, I have a story about this. Years ago, um, I had some, what shall we say? I had a, a sin that kept manifesting in my heart. Actually, I won't. it was a lust. It was a passion. And it kept manifesting. And every time I turned around, I felt this way. And it was not a good feeling because I knew I was tempted. Oh, was I tempted. Every time I turned around, I was tempted with this thing. It was in here. It wasn't from out there. It was in here. And I was trying to deal with it. And I, I remember it, it, I, would, I would deal with this and I would turn on the radio. And the radio would say, they just hauled this person off to prison for this same thing. And I would turn on the TV and they would say, yep, they came to get this person for doing this same thing. And I, frankly, at one point I thought, uh, the door's going to knock any minute and they're going to come in and get me because of this thing in my heart, this temptation. Every time I turned around, do you know what? There is a verse I want you to read, and we're right there. It is chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. God's not mad at us. Do you see what that says? God is not mad at you. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I started to pray that verse. 
When I first started praying it, it was awful because I knew there was no peace between the Father and I. There was no peace in Kathy, let alone peace between the Father and I. And I would pray that verse, being justified by faith, there is peace between the Father and I through the blood of Jesus is what I added. Through that blood of Jesus. Did I feel it? No. Did I act it? No. No. But I believed it. I kept my eyes on that and not on how I felt and not on how I was acting. And you know what? It took a little bit. It took about two weeks. And you know what at the end of two weeks I noticed? It was gone. It was gone. I no longer had that temptation. It was gone. And you know what? These years later, I'm not tempted with that anymore. It is not even there. Why? I had been justified from it through the blood of Jesus. That blood working in me justified me, took it away. It's not even in there. The temptation is no longer there. God will do the same thing for you. Because Jesus died for you at your very worst. I have a great song for right here. And it is God Sacrificed the Lamb by the Water of Life Boys. While that song is playing, get justified. Get justified. Victory. 
Jesus said, Jesus said to a ruler of the Jews, he said, you must be born again. You must be. Do you know what happens when you are born again? Your spirit and the spirit of Jesus become one. And all the benefits of the gospel, forgiveness of sins, healing of sickness, uh, prosperity, of uh, delivering from every hindering influence in your life become yours. And not only that, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob becomes your father and your God. You know, he's not a bad guy to have working with you. The father will take you and he will make you his own child. No matter how bad you think you are, no matter what you have done, the father is able to take you and make you a child of his own through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So to be born again, how are you born again? The Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you say, Jesus, become Lord of my life, and you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. You should be set at safety. You should be born again. You shall receive the spirit of Jesus and you and the spirit of Jesus become one. That is a glorious thing. And you know what else? I want to make sure you understand this. When you are born again, you have just bought your eternal, eternal salvation. Being born again makes you part of the family of God. And you have a place in heaven reserved for you for eternity. Not a bad thing to invest in, is it? Until next time, God bless.